Good morning, New Life Church. Model family of God. Model church in a model city. If we're going to speak the truth, we should speak the truth. We have an identity in Christ. I don't know what that was, but, oh, that's just, I would like to point out one thing about my buddy Brent that was just playing guitar. He doesn't play through any pedals. Did y'all notice that? That's just gift from God, guitar and an amp. It's yawn, faithful, worship team. God bless you for your faithfulness, for your... For your willingness, because we put y'all in some situations, and I know it, because I, I want you to understand something. There will come a day when we understand the nature of the season that we are living in and the pivotal moment in American history and the history of God's church. And I don't think the words can do justice in the worship that goes forth, in the prayers that go forth, in the word that goes forth. They are not empty or powerless. They're mighty for the destruction of strongholds. See, when you take part in something like when this worship is taking place, I get, I don't, I can tell you from the depth of my soul that I would prefer not to scream ever. I'm a pretty, this is the normal talking voice. Mary generally says, what? What did you say? I'm like, I don't want to project. I just want to be able to talk. So I'm going to have to move closer. But there are opportunities that come and you have to seize them. And there is this, see, I didn't think about the flag behind me. I could just hear the roar. I could just hear the roar that he is roaring over his people. For some people, that's a wake up call. But for everybody, it's a call to our battle stations. We don't war as the world wars. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. You know, I have all these scriptures that you can throw up as I quote them, but I'm going to speak to you plainly today. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. There are powers and principalities that would love to crush a nation that says it's under God. But that will not happen. Kyrie Christe, I kept hearing it while Josh was praying. He was praying mercy, mercy over the church. Kyrie Christe is mercy Christ. Have mercy Christ. Have mercy over America, Jesus. This one nation under God, have mercy on us indivisible with liberty and justice for all the, the pillars that this society are built on have been attacked relentlessly but that one nation under God part at the beginning says something it says I will look up to the hill from where my help comes from my help cometh from the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. He does not slumber nor sleep. I have no faith in my own abilities or any other man's abilities, but I have total faith in the ability of God and his ability to give gifts unto men and lead us 
into a higher place and a better place. And I tell you what, he has not told me who's going to win that election. That means I have to pray for both. Because he said I should pray for the leaders that are in authority over me. I don't know who's going to be in authority over me come November, but I know that I'm going to lift up the prayer of the righteous that availeth much. Because that's my position. My position is in Christ. I'm called to my battle station in Christ Jesus. And like I preached last Sunday, and I'm going to preach again in the same vein, but it's 1 Thessalonians 5.14. It says, we appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, to instruct those who are not in their place of battle. That's in the Passion Translation. I encourage you to read it in New King James or you read it in the New American Standard. You compare the word for word to the paraphrase. You get as deep as you can get into the word of God. Ask for wisdom, ask for revelation, ask for understanding. You need to be in the word. Don't just believe what I'm telling you. You need to be knowing by the Spirit that what I say is is true. Because you are confirming, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to confirm the Word within you. He is testifying to it. He is a witness to it. And so, we appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, to instruct those who are not in their place of battle. Be skilled at gently encouraging those who feel themselves inadequate. Be faithful to stand your ground. Help the weak to stand again. Be quick to demonstrate patience with everyone. Colossians 1, 9 and 10 says, For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I pray that over former President Trump and President Biden for the peace of this nation, that wisdom and knowledge from the Lord God Almighty would be theirs that he would grant them wise and understanding hearts. See, I'm praying mercy over this nation and I'm praying humility over its leaders. And the wisdom of God, that in this time of trouble, they would call on him and view him as salvation. That's where my hope is. Now, in dark and troubled times, when there's a lot of turmoil, you shine into the darkness. You, as the church of the living God, represent the light of the world. His name is Jesus. There is no higher name. There's no name that I call on aside from his. I pray over you every Sunday that you would have the love of the Father, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You need God in action in your life. You need a practical living relationship with the living God. There's no other place to stand. Everything else is sand. When storms come and where do we live? If anybody in the world could teach about storms, it's us. We are intimately acquainted what happens when storms happen. You know, There's not limbs in my yard from Ike. There's not limbs in my yard from Harvey. 
There's not limbs in my yard from barrel. You hear what I'm saying? No storm has kept me from moving forward. No storm is going to keep me from moving forward. We are called according to the purposes of God. When the storm comes, we're going to be the firm foundation where people find high ground, where people find stability, steadfastness, where people find the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. You know when people find that? What is this? What makes you different? Why are you showing kindness in the midst of impatience and anger? Let me tell you. See, the call to battle awareness. You're in a fight whether you like it or not. If you call Jesus your Lord and Savior, you wrestle not with flesh and blood, but there is a kingdom of darkness that would love to tear down everything that stands for love and unity, everything that stands for justice, everything that stands for the name of Jesus being glorified, him being exalted. But we are well armed for this conflict. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations of every lofty and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. We are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. I want you to notice there's a couple of pieces to that that are very important. We're destroying speculations and every lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, but we're taking our thoughts captive. There's two parts. You can't just go attacking other people's fortresses if you're not going to bring your own thoughts into obedience to Christ. And this is why I, I felt compelled this morning to, to really, these, some of these things I'm saying are fundamental. I don't, I don't think that I'm rewriting anything. I think that I am speaking from the word just according to the truth of God. And I, I'm just, Stating the obvious of Christianity, I think about um, mere Christianity. Like, when, like there's nothing mere about Christianity because the entire, the entire relationship is supernatural and we're called to it. So your life is by nature supernatural. You serve a living God who lives through you in the world when making you salt and light for those who are perishing in darkness and the futility of their own minds who have never heard the good news without hope in the world, that's Ephesians. See, we are armed with truth and love. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And our God is love. There's freedom in the truth. That's John 8, 33. And there's unity in love. Colossians 3, 14 says, in addition to all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Now, consider this. He has given you his love. You are, as a child of God, his beloved child, wholly chosen and beloved. But what did he just say we had to do? 
put it on. Why do we put on love? Why have I purposed in my heart to live a clean life of holiness? Why do I keep going when I want to quit? You know, there's a lot of why me's in this world. Why me? Why do I have to go through this? Why can't I be like everybody else? Why can't I do what everybody else can do? Why do they get, why are they prospering when I'm under discipline like you preached about Dusty during the offering? I thought, man, he just knits the whole service together. Because it's really the discipline of the Lord that calls us to maturity. And we pray to come up to this higher place. We pray to come into a, a better, stronger relationship. We pray to come into unity in this relationship and covenant that we have with God. And we pray for maturity When you prayed those prayers, I hope you understood that like it was told to Peter, when you were a young man, you went wherever you wanted to go, but when you got older, they'll they'll put chains around your wrist and lead you where you don't want to go. Maturity is coming to the place where you're not running wherever you feel like going. Maturity is when you come into that place of understanding that why I'm here is higher than all of my desires. Our why has to move from the flesh to the spirit. Like if I keep thinking about why my life's been so hard, then I never think about your life ever being hard. And I want you to show me grace and mercy, but I never think about the grace and mercy that you need to see. I want kindness for myself because I say, why are they treating me like this? Why can't they be nice to me? Why can't they see me? Why can't they honor me? You don't see them. You're wrapped up in seeing only one direction. Your why has to move from the flesh to the spirit where you start saying, This is why I put on love. This is why I choose to live holy. This is why I choose to keep going, not quit, not back up, not surrender, not go back to an old life. Because you know what? There's nothing for me there. I've seen too much. See, even if I tried to go back to the world now, I would always carry with me the knowledge of the testimony that I have. And I have seen God be good. And I've seen him love me where I never knew love like God loves me. Where he has done things in my life that are only supernatural in their kindness. For no other reason than to show kindness. I mean, just to lavish his love. And I've seen miracles. And I've seen things that were impossible become possible. Like that. I've I've watched somebody who is deaf from birth here. You say what you want to. You can argue that he doesn't do that now. All I can say is I watched him do it. He's healed my family. He's healed my friends. He's healed people I know in this body. He's healed people that are across the world. Mission trips. I've seen things that I can't deny anymore. I can't deny his word because he always kept it. He has never, he has never shown himself unfaithful. 
I can't bring a case against him. This is why I don't quit. It's why we don't quit. Because I am his and he is mine. We're in covenant. Thank you for teeing that one up, Josh. A covenant, you know, I I speak this over the country. The covenant we're under isn't an eye for an eye. His blood speaks a better word. You can't fight anger with anger. Have we learned nothing of sowing and reaping? We have to sow love. We have to sow kindness. And we're going to sow into this relationship that he's given us because my life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. We represent him now. You know, when you represent somebody, you don't get to choose as much. I represent the King of kings, Lord of lords. I represent the kingdom of light, kingdom of God. I am not claiming perfection. I'm still pressing on towards the high calling that we've been called. But we're not going to quit and back up and not keep pressing because we have to be light in this darkness. I mean, we've been speaking Isaiah 60 over this church for the last 30 years. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Darkness covers the earth, and deep darkness its people. But that's not your life. You know, that that same scripture talks about him leading kings to that light. He is completely able to change whatever script you think is coming. To pour out his glory on flesh. To move by his spirit. I pray the gift of repentance over us. That we would remember who it is that we are serving and who it is we're dealing with. With reverence and respect, we would come back into the understanding that he is the living God. That when he speaks, things change. It says that he can move the path of a king's heart like a river. And I believe him. I know him too well to turn back. How many of you know him too well to turn back? Yeah. See, I love hearing your testimonies, and I know you've heard some of mine, but the world is who we're testifying to with our lives. We are speaking the good news to the darkness. Every time you shine, that's what's happening. When the fire burns within you, and it is a, it is a choice, Y'all know my favorite quote, some of you, that which bears light must endure burning. There's a responsibility to burning. If you're going to bear light, then you're going to have to lead people in the right direction. You're going to have to choose, like Paul did, to say what you see in me and what you hear me speak. Do these things and the Lord will give you peace. He'll be with you. That's the responsibility that comes from maturity. That's saying, I'm going to be a light that you can follow, and I'm not going to lead you over a cliff. I'm going to lead you closer to him. This is the commitment that we are all making. This is why we keep doing what we do. We're a body called according to his purposes. We have been established for such a time as this. We are called to be in this specific time. Look around you. These are your brothers and your sisters in Christ. Family before God. 
I have a testimony and you have a testimony. So we have a testimony together that the turmoil in this world can't take away. That's why we're able to stand. Christ in us is why we are the way we are. The reason we keep moving the way he's called us to move. And I, I'll say that to you. I said during worship that if, if I could put it into words, what I was sensing, it was charge. It's not static. It's not stationary. See, the breakthrough, and I've said this, and I'm going to keep saying it until it soaks in. The breakthrough isn't when you touch the beach. The breakthrough is when they can't keep you on the beach. Because you keep moving forward. And you don't quit and stay there. There's going to be attacks. There's going to be resistance in moving forward. Even in this body, as we move into being who we're called to be, there's going to be resistance to that. Anything that has territory doesn't want to let go of it. And if we wrestle not with flesh and blood, then there's there's powers that don't want to let go. As we move forward, we don't go, oh, whoops. Didn't realize you were standing there. Sorry. No, we're here to take it. That's why we're moving. That's why he's called us to this place, so that we can be a body fit and able, effective in their place, to speak the word of God with all boldness, to pray on earth as it is in heaven, and to see harvest because is he not worthy of his interests being managed by those who represent him? Is he not worthy of seeing those that he died for come into the kingdom of God? Yeah, he is. The entire economy of heaven is Jesus getting what he deserves. All honor. All glory. All is for his glory. He is going to glorify himself through you and through me and through this place as we work together. So because I know him, I'm compelled to represent his interests in the world. I'm praying without ceasing. I'm standing in that love that I've chosen to wear every day. You know, I told it all on Wednesday, when you drive around after a storm, you can see people that are anxious and they're scared. They look like sheep without a shepherd. Not everybody, but some people. Those are who we're called to. Because if he has given you strength, then he's made you to sow your strength into those who are weak. That's what that says. That's what the first scripture I read says. We appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to instruct those who are not in their place of battle. Not condemn them and shame them. Hey, come up here with me. He's got a place for you. You have a ministry in the kingdom of God because you believe in Jesus. He's going to use you to touch the people you come into contact with. And so my place is to make sure that if you fall down, I help you stand back up. Now, I've got to stand in my spot, which is what it says. I have to be faithful to stand in my place so that when somebody is weak near me, I can lift them up. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm... I'm honoring the position that God has called me into. I'm acknowledging that he's called me to this place of responsibility. I'm called according to his purposes. I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit to be a witness. Now what we're going to do as a body at New Life Church is equip the saints for the work of the ministry. We're going to raise you up into that place so that you start realizing See that? Be skilled at gently encouraging those who feel themselves inadequate. No, you're not inadequate. You're empowered by the Holy Spirit. You have a testimony that I don't have. You can speak life to the world because you know him. You don't have to have a degree in 
theology or philosophy. You have to have a relationship with God. You can speak from what you know. Who is he to you? So Mary and I, we just sit in the living room and I said, why do you put on love? Mary gets tears in her eyes because she puts on love because she knows him. It's as complicated as the answer. Sorry, I'm not going to give you an enormous formula that you have to work through for the rest of your life. The law is love. And if you have not love, then you're a clanging symbol. I grew up, my grandparents, my grandfather was a... (laughs) Died in the wool. Y'all remember that phrase for Baptist? Died in the wool Baptist. Staunch Republican. Loved Reagan. My grandma was a Southern Democrat. So between them, the issue of the day between them was big business and the working man. My grandfather was pro Exxon. Man three generations, and my grandma was, if somebody's not watching over Exxon, then they're not going to take care of the little guy. (laughs) And so between the two of them, this is the same house. There was not bloodshed in their house. (laughs) Two ideologies could coexist in the same household. They were both in Christ. Do you know that If I said that now we all know who God wants you to vote for, there'd be people in this room that were voting for two different people. And y'all would all be like, well, how could they think? And everybody would have their own reasons. They had their own reasons for those ideologies that they carried. They had grown up two different ways. They'd had two different families. They'd listen to two different lines of thinking, generationally. But I'll tell you something. They had a list they prayed every night. My name was on it. They read through the Bible seven times, cover to cover. My grandpa couldn't read fast, so my grandma would read to him chapter a night. My grandpa is the one who told me that they made it through seven times. He told me when they started, the eighth time, I think. Do you see what I'm saying, though, in this this noise? If you have love, you're not a clanging cymbal. If you have love, then you can speak a word to the weary in the time of need that they need to hear it. A word fitly spoken in due season. See, their differences of opinion didn't keep them from being married 65 years, raising three kids, living in the same house for all those 65 years. See what I'm saying? Somewhere along the line, the attack on those columns of who we are, they took root. We started fighting each other instead of seeing that the battle is outside of ourselves. You know, it's on our our money, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. That is a unity statement over the nation. It's who we say we are. One nation under God. But if the church isn't under God, you can't expect the nation to be. And you are the church, individually. It's not just this, it's the buildings don't do any of this. It's us, individually called according to his purpose, but united in love.
the perfect bond of unity. We seek the things of God. You know God loves justice. And mercy triumphs over judgment. And this is why we live and have our being in Jesus. So that I'm not going to be silent while there are those perishing in darkness without him, without hope in the world. And their lives, they matter more to me than proving to you that I'm right. Because Jesus died for them to be saved. And if you've never heard a message of grace, then all the rocks thrown over sin aren't going to make any difference. You don't know why they're mad at you. They have to hear the good news to be saved. And we're the ones who preach it. I close with this. John 7, it's John 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. What that word means is that I've prepared myself for service. That they themselves also may be sanctified in the truth. That they also may be prepared for service in the truth. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their words. So why I live clean and holy is so that I can speak the word to you and you live clean and holy so that you can speak the word to them and together we see Jesus glorified. Amen. 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 Bow your heads and close your eyes please. God, first and foremost, I pray for the grace, grace of Jesus over us and the gift of repentance. I pray it over our body, but God, I pray it over the nation of America right now in Jesus' name, that we would come to see those things that have taken on too much importance, God, and that we would see things that have started to receive worship that never should have received worship. God, I ask now that you would, by the power of the Holy Spirit, convict us of the error of our ways. Draw us back into covenant and your heart, God. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And Lord, we don't deny what it looks like. Our heads are not in the sand. Our eyes are looking up to where our help comes from. And we admit that you can save a nation in a day. And we put our faith and trust in you, God. And we will speak the truth with all boldness, but we will also speak it in love. And if you have never made Jesus Lord of your life, I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. He changed my life and he changed the lives of so many in this room. If you could hear the stories. <laughs> we all desperately needed a savior. And he is faithful and true to us. So if you'd like to make Jesus Lord of your life, pray with me right now. Jesus, I need you. I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I believe that you rose again. Jesus, I ask you, please forgive me of all my sins and all my trespasses. 
and help me to forgive all those who have trespassed against me. Jesus, I ask you to make me new and teach me how to live your way by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because from this day forward, Jesus, you are my Lord.